Hi there and welcome to yet another episode of Do Yourself No Harm, the podcast designed to help you prevent, identify and manage burnout with me, Dr Claire Ashley. For those of you that don't already know me, I'm a doctor, a burnout survivor and a burnout expert. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit like and subscribe and join me every Sunday for a new episode. Although the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that last week I didn't upload an episode as normal. I was going to talk about the cost of living crisis and how I feel that that's going to impact on burnout for both individuals and also systems, but I pulled it because of the death of the Queen. I really didn't feel it was the right time to be talking about the cost of living crisis, but rest assured I will release the episode very shortly because it's something that we are going to have to talk about as we head into the winter because I think it's likely to be a very very difficult time for a lot of us and unfortunately the cost of living crisis is directly going to impact on our experiences of burnout and the choices that we have to manage our burnout as well. However for today's episode with tomorrow being the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II Tonight's episode is inspired by her, so it's all about the Queen, and in particular, the importance of living a life and working in alignment with your values, how that protects you from burnout, and how your values change with burnout as well. So, regardless of your opinion about the reign of Queen Elizabeth II, you cannot deny that she is a woman that worked incredibly hard. I mean, she worked up until two days before she died at the age of 96, although personally, who can blame her for going so quickly after meeting our brand new Prime Minister. Um, but personally, I, I've been thinking really hard about how she protected herself from burnout and mental and emotional exhaustion when she worked for as long as, and as hard as she did. And she carried such responsibility under quite intense scrutiny from both the public and the media. And so she must have had really robust coping strategies and mechanisms to prevent her from burning out. Now, I think that one of the ways, obviously I'm just speculating, but I think that one of the ways that she protected herself both mentally and emotionally was that she lived and worked in accordance with her values and very consistently as well. Even before her father died and she took the crown at 25, she said in a public address, I declare before you all that my whole life, be it long or short, will be devoted to your service. And I think that she demonstrated throughout her reign that the values of duty, service and faith were the values that she consistently lived by. And I think that this likely protected her in terms of her work and her emotional and mental load. Even her grandson, Prince William, referred to her values in his recent statement about his grandmother's death. He said, I thank her on behalf of my generation for providing an example of service and dignity in public life that was from a different age, but always relevant to us all. Now, I do agree with that statement largely. It feels like those values of duty and service are perhaps values that are not so publicly aspired to by modern leaders or just the general public I would say, but it is clear that to the Queen, certainly, that those were the values that drove her and guided her by. Let's talk a little bit about what values are and what they mean, and particularly in the context of burnout. So your values are the things that you believe are important in the way that you live and work. They should determine your priorities, and deep down, they're probably the measures that you use to tell yourself if your life or if your work is turning out the way that you want it to. So when things, um, the, when the things that you do and the way that you behave match with your values, life is generally good, work is generally good, you feel satisfied and content. But when the way that you live your life, work and behave don't align with your personal values, that's when you start to get a mismatch and that's when things can start to feel wrong. And not only can it feel wrong, mismatch of values can be a factor in burnout as well. So for instance, let's say you value family life, but you have to work 70 to 100 hours a week in your job. Of course, you're going to feel stressed about that. You're going to feel conflict because you're not able to spend time with your family because of the hours that you're working. And for myself, when I burnt out, what I really valued was spending time with my patients. And I got a lot of satisfaction from knowing and feeling that I had the resources to do a good job those resources might have been time, but also physical resources um, and you know clinics to be able to refer my patients to, that sort of thing. 
And I just couldn't do that under the conditions that I was forced to work under and I subsequently burnt out. And I think that it the step that, that was taken between mismatching with my values and burning out was moral injury. Um, and I think that that really, really deeply affected how I felt and perceived my work. And it felt internally, it just felt, it just felt wrong. Now values are generally fairly stable, but they don't have strict limits or boundaries. And as you move through life, your values are likely to change. They might not. And what's interesting about the queen's life is that her values did not appear to change at all throughout her life. And I imagine that that's largely what sustained her during some very difficult times. However, not everyone will experience this with their values. And actually, I think for most of us, our values will evolve and change with time and life experience. In burnout, your values are not only likely to change, re-evaluation of, of your values actually forms part of your recovery. So if you look at Bernier's theoretical model of burnout recovery, re-evaluation of values is the fourth stage. So the first stage of burnout recovery, according to this model, is admitting that there's a problem. The second stage is distancing yourself from work, so taking some time out. The third is restoration of health, so starting to take measures to feel better, both physically, emotionally, mentally. And the fourth stage is re-evaluation of, val of values. And then you need to go through this process before you move on to the fifth stage, which is exploring new work possibilities. But, and then you go on to enter the final stage, which is making a break or a change and hopefully sustaining your recovery. Now, work has shown that burnout changes people's values. And to me, this makes complete sense because burnout is such a huge cataclysmic experience, which changes your emotional, your mental, your physical health significantly. And not only that, recovery takes a huge amount of time. It requires considerable change. And for instance, work has shown that people are more likely to value their health post burnout, for instance. And to me, again, that makes absolute sense. If you go through that experience, you're not likely to come out of it not valuing your health. And this is why keeping in touch with your values is a lifelong exercise and particularly so after you've burnt out. You need to continuously revisit your values, especially if you start to feel unbalanced, but, you know, or if something's not quite right with your work and you can't quite figure out why. Sometimes going back to your values, reevaluating them might give you the answer. So prior to my burnout, my values were probably on reflection, quite broadly similar to the Queen's. I prioritised duty, dependability, mastery, safety and service in my work. And when my work started to put a pressure on me and I couldn't deliver what I considered to be good, effective, safe patient care, it, it caused huge internal pain and it definitely was a factor um, in my burnout. Post burnout, my values have changed and I revisit this periodically. And most recently I identified that my values are advocacy, family, autonomy, honesty and creativity. How have I changed my job to align with these values? Well, I'm going to tell you now. So I do my advocacy work through being a charity ambassador for doctors in distress. I also did some work for Doctors Association UK, but ironically, I had to leave that role because of because of my burnout, unfortunately, and having to go back through practitioner health and get some formal support. But that was definitely part of my advocacy work. And I think in all of the work that I do with my social media and with this podcast in particular is I'm sharing my journey. And it's really important to me that I advocate for people that are burnt out and that I share what I've learned so that you don't feel as lonely and that you've got some expertise and someone kind of guiding you through the process who's done it already. So that's how I kind of fulfill and satisfy that particular value. In terms of, you know, valuing family now, what I've done is I've changed my career so that I don't have to stress about childcare, uh, so that I can spend more time with my family and not have to worry about doing drop-offs and then getting to work and not have to worry about getting pickups as well, because that was a huge source of stress for me when I burnt out. I'm really lucky that I've had a 
a career where I've been able to do that. Um, but it has come at a cost, unfortunately. So yes, I have more flexibility. I don't have a guaranteed income because now I just purely locum. But for me, because I prioritise my family and that's the value that matters, I can accept those changes. In terms of um, autonomy, I have come to recognise that I cannot change the fundamental pressures at work that caused me to burn out. But I have been able to change the type of work I do and when I do it and how I do it. And that's how I've created autonomy. Autonomy isn't just a value. It's actually something that is really essential to burnout recovery as well. And I feel really lucky that I've been able to do that with my job. In terms of honesty, I, I've always been an honest person. I'm always honest both at work and in my personal life. And I do think that, and I hope that this comes across in my social media work and how I carry myself publicly as well. Creativity is a relatively new value that I prioritise uh, because creativity has allowed me to explore mastery in a different way. So I've started to sew my own clothes, for instance. So it, I've been able to learn a new skill and um, have mastery of that particular skill. But it also allows me to get into a state of flow, which is a form of mindfulness and is also really good for burnout recovery. Mastery, again, and creativity are key to burnout recovery. So it's not surprising that that now forms one of my key values. So living my life and working in accordance to my new change values has helped me to create a work pattern that works for me and for my family post burnout. I realise that I'm lucky in many respects because my job does give me a huge degree of flexibility in allowing me to do that. But being able to make those changes has been really crucial to my recovery. And I do periodically go back and reassess because my values are fluid and they ever change as I progress through my recovery. So I hope that you can see how working in accordance with your values is really key to both protecting you from burnout, but also being a key stage in burnout recovery as well. So I hope that this episode has been helpful and I hope that you might then be able to go off and think about your values and think about whether or not you're able to work in alignment with them. And if not, what changes you need to make in order to do so. Join me next week for another episode. If you'd like to see a little bit more about what I do and you can't wait for next week when I release my next episode, you can come and see me on Instagram where I'm at Dr. Claire Ashley or you can join me on my Facebook page, The Burnout Doctor. The link is in the bio. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you all very soon.